looks beautiful. Where can we get it? Mexico. Hey, Frank, can I talk with you real quick? Sure. So what do we do? I want Rosa to have a dress, but we can't afford to drive that far. So what do we do then? Um, I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure. Let's just tell Rosa. Rosa, I'm sorry, but we can't afford to drive that far. What about flying? Sorry, but not for a dress. Ow. Hold up. I remember seeing an ad for something once. I think it was called Dressing Room. Oh, yeah, Hi, I'm your app instructor, and I will show you how to run this app. It has a search menu where we can find your clothing, a homepage to see recommended outfits, and a cart to see and delete your selected product. It has everything from pants to shirts to dresses to socks. It is truly your virtual dressing room. Rosa, I think this might work. And best of all, if your clothes never quite fit, our apps let you size your clothes. My jeans never fits me. And if you have a digital mirror, you can now see yourself on an even bigger scale. I'll go to the mirror and see what it looks like. That filter looks amazing. It does look nice. And you can have a main size too. That's okay. I'm a bit bigger than Rosa. I don't want to delete her measurement. That's okay. You can add different profiles, fit different people and their choices. Wow, that's neat, but I'm good. I already bought all my clothing from Scan.com, but they haven't shown up yet. Well, the good news is, unlike Scan.com, you can get refunds if your product doesn't show up two weeks after the delivery date without notice. Goodbye, Scan.com. Hello, dressing room. And best of all, this app is free! Yay! Yeah. Okay. Better than I expected. I've never seen a soft puppet presentation before. I love that. Uh, <laughs> she's wanted to do it since like since last year. We just never did. I finally won. <laughs> <laughs> so with our app, it's called Dressing Room. Yes. And this is what the app will look like right there. But you have like your settings. So our app, we didn't mention this in our soft puppet show, but. It also has like a feature where you can like find outfits, like match them up, post them on social media. And when you first download the app, it would have like a tutorial to show you how to use this app. And it'd be like a little character that would help you. So this is just all of that with like regular settings. But then if you... But then there's also your shopping cart, like any, because this is also a shopping app, as well as like, a, like tailoring shop almost. But you can shop so with like any regular shopping screen, like Amazon or if you have Timu, you can scroll through stuff. So, and but also with the shopping cart, you can click on clothes and resize them. So, and then home is like. Your home screen on your phone, it has icons so you can get stuff and like that. So you can have like, you can also make clothes in this app. So you can have that and you can also have like, you can create an outfit where you like put a shirt that's made by somebody else and pants made by somebody else. And you can put that together. And then your shopping cart, you can see select the new items, whatever, but you can also if you didn't size when you picked it out to put it in your shopping cart, then you can go back and resize it if you also don't like the size anymore. But then, also, since it has a sizing feature, there's also a camera built into it. So, like, there's no add ons to your camera that you already have. So, it's an in app camera. So, you can, like, see it on yourself when you want to look at, like, how this outfit looks on you. Like, so, kind of Snapchat filter a little bit. Yeah. That's it. So I'm going to try to elaborate more on the back end. So remember that tailoring she mentioned? That was most important for our back end. Uh, we have, uh, so for tailoring, it means that we can't really like streamline things easily because you can't streamline something if it keeps changing. So we uh, are trying to automate it. And that is 
really hard because automating production of clothes, especially sewing, is like hard because the fabric bend. Uh, and so we uh, found a company that does this thing where they kind of like make the fabric kind of stiff, then they like sew it, and then they make it unstiff by removing the thing that made it stiff. And that was what worked best for us. So that's basically what we're doing. It's way faster than I thought it would be. <laughs> you had mentioned that your kind of problem for this was just looking for clothes that were too far away, too expensive to go look at. What other things led you to this solution? Well, so it's like some people, they want to post on social media, but they don't want to be insecure about stuff. And this is like, you don't post, like post your personalized or image. You post outfit ideas for other people. So that was also like, that's a big problem in society today, like kids being super insecure about stuff because of social media. And that can also help a little bit with that. I'm not saying that it would fix the problem, but it could help. Outside of the one company that we talked to about tailoring animals, were there any other outside resources that you used? Uh, we uh, like had to figure out what our competition was doing. Uh, we didn't actually talk to that company. We were like reading articles about that company. We also like read articles about like how like Snapchat filters worked in general. Like we described it a lot more last time. Uh, we also uh, had to study other like forms of automation or like how like we know what other companies did and what that one company did seem like the best option because other companies had, had took advantage of like only making one kind of thing, which was obviously not what we were doing. Have you guys come to this idea of like other ideas you might have been uh, uh, considering or what was the selection process like? Well, when we first started the year, this was our idea all year, but we've added things so it's like the tailored thing because like other people have done stuff like this. But when we first wanted to decide this, people wanted a filter or a VR dressing room. And we went to, with the filter because a VR dressing room would be a lot to do. Mm -hmm. So if we have a filter, lots of people use Snapchat. So if we have something like filters, people would already know how to use filters like that. And most people don't have VR, so that's mm -hmm. a lot of people. When it came to divvying up work for your project, how did you make sure that everyone had something to do and had their own role and that their work was valued? So we, with our team, we have three main setups where we have research, design, and coding. So if you're in research, like the research and design have to work together. Like I, we had someone else on design, but she quit robotics. So I'm the main one on design but we have a research team, so I like come up with the design, but we come up with the project together. The research team will do the research for the design, and then the coders get to do coding. And most, uh, us coders, like we usually go and help the designers and researchers, just like if they need help with any of that stuff, and if we're just, we just have something else to do. Yeah. Were there any transitions between the three groups? Did everyone get to touch every part, or were your roles kind of defined and set? Um, well, the coders, the main thing with the coders is like, the coders pay, stay the same because it's easier to have like coders stay the same because they know what to do. But if you like keep switching out the coders, it's harder for everyone to know exactly what to do. Well, no, also, at the, at the beginning of yeah, the year, beginning, I, I was a researcher. Um, and then, like, Towards the first competition, or yeah, towards oh, the a few weeks before. Yeah, a few weeks before the first competition that we did uh, the qualifier, I switched to coding. So, huh? and yeah, like other people tried to like they did some coding at the beginning of the year, yeah. and some got some missions done, but um, like some for some of the things we couldn't do all of that because it like limited some of our time. Extra missions that we could have 
Who have you been um, sharing your solution with? Uh, we've uh, been sharing it with other members of the team, like our coach, uh, each other. Yeah, um, some parents uh, came to our school to like observe our yeah. presentation. Did you get any? Did you get any helpful feedback after sharing your solution with the parents? Um, yes. Yeah. My mom, uh, in one of the parents who judged us, she, um, she told us some things I did like originally. I was acting for the mom, and then I did a voice for the mom, <laughs> and it uh, went very. Sideways, um, <laughs> to say the least. So I just scrapped the voice because my mom said you don't need to do the voice. <laughs> you just don't need to do the voice. Yeah, and um, during our sock puppet thing, we were kind of laughing a little bit during it, and we tried to not do that. So. Sometimes you break. <laughs> Did they share anything about the break. solution that you guys used to um, make changes to your app? Uh, not really. Like, uh, I think they just mainly told us how to like fix our presentation. Yeah, like, like, yeah. Is this is this something that you guys uh, would see like your peers, your friends, your classmates using? Um, I think that like our peers and classmates would be using it for more of the social media part of it. Mm -hmm. But I know that adults, like my mom. She would use it to get jeans because I know that she just struggles to find jeans that fit her well. I definitely would expect my peers using this and uh, some of my ideas. Yeah, like that's the one problem with my ideas. It's like, a, it's like they're really niche or like, just like there are ideas that I made for basically me, myself, and I, knowing full well that nobody else has the same problems as me. Because <laughs> I have a lot of problems. <laughs> You probably wouldn't see it like in the middle of school because it's kind of just an app thing on your phone. And most people don't use their phones in the middle of like, class and everything. Also, it'd be like mainly for buying clothes. So I don't know if a lot of us are going to be like buying clothes all the time on my like app. Buying clothes in the middle of class. <laughs> most people anyway. It's just stop wearing. This shirt was from sixth grade. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wearing something that was provided for me and something I had all the way back in sixth grade below well, right? I think that's all the questions we have for project today. Do you guys have a robot design you'd like to share with us? Yeah, we didn't forget the robot this time. Let's go, Grant. You remembered. Go, Grant. Last time. All right. So this is our robot. It's kind of just a small compact thing because we try to like play it simple, I guess. So we have like a couple attachments um, for most of our missions that we have. And this is our main one. We keep this on the robot all the time. It's kind of just our like push in. And a lot of missions on this, uh, the Masterpiece board this year, have a lot of push things that you can just use to push them in. Like the craft creator, the banana boat, we just push that. And we, we just push that along with one of the audience members. Yeah. Because it's just two things at the same time, it really helps with time. Yeah, we also did, um, for the, what is it, the, it's the virtual 3D person like that, it's called the hologram. The hologram performer, um, we got a audience member, we went past it to the music note thing, put an audience member there, or we tried to. Yeah, and then, um, we just added um, a couple like push things to go forward and back, and then do the hologram performer, yeah. to make it really easy. Yeah, and then, and, and then um, for these two, when we're, sometimes we're pushing a lot of audience members at the same time, usually our max is like three. So we put it on the sides here to make it so it can catch all of them on like when we're going. And one of them we have where we're going to one, from one side of the board to the other side. And on the way there's an expert that you can get. So we push that to the other side and then we push that into the popcorn slot because that's where that ex that specific expert goes. And there's another area where we use those things too, right? Yeah. 
Oh, and we also reuse our code a lot <laughs> with um, our number one setting on this. Does we use, we use that like I think two or three two times. times to do banana boat um, to push the banana boat past the line and then do the first part the push on the crap shooter. So yeah, that one. And then number eight, we use these things which I like to call chopsticks to push the uh what are they? The rolling camera. Yeah, the rolling camera. The rolling camera push the rolling camera, it sometimes goes into the light blue, actually it usually does. Yeah, usually for some reason whenever it gets stuck and it's like on there for a second. And then it goes past, like, the thing with using 8 is it's going a far time, so if it gets stuck it can then just slide off of it. Yeah, then... we, we also use 8 to push this into the, um, I think it's the museum thing. Yeah. We have this on there, we have an audience member, and then we have an expert, yeah. which start, which is the one that starts on our side. Gives us the museum names. curator, I think, is what it's called. All right, and now we have two of these things. One's a spare. Yeah. So we have two of these because what it, what they're meant to do is they're meant to like bend to push in one of the missions, and that kind of like sometimes breaks to make, makes the Legos a little weak, so we had to make, we had to make two of them just to make sure one doesn't like break. Yeah, which it um, it's, it's to do the, it's to do that one where it's the spinning thing on the top and if both people do it, it's extra points. Yeah, I what it's it's called. do the same color. Yeah, because um, what it does, you have to you're supposed to push it down, and then it'll bring something up that'll make it spin. But we learned that if you just have something that bends like this, it'll push it down by itself without having to use a motor to push it down. So. Yeah, and we don't we don't really use any like motors or oh, anything. Yeah, movement. yeah, except for movement <laughs> motors. We kind of just use push attachments and stuff, and that usually works for most of our missions. And then this is for the dragon one. Yeah, we just we put it like on the side right here, and then we do since it's right next to our home, we just start it right there, and then it spins and hits it down, and that usually works. Usually, plus you get it wrong. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it's off. Like we put it on like this, and it spins around the cake dragon. Yeah, the lever that pushed the dragon forward. Yeah. Well, that's about our mission. Pretty much it. Yeah. That wasn't in order. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I love how I love how detailed. Excited you guys are about like the, the clearly you've done a lot of thinking about the individual missions and how these attachments are going to help you achieve those goals. How much, uh, how often, or how many times did you test this? How did you iterate? Like changes had to be made. Um, so we did all of our coding really early, and we got it like done pretty fast. Yeah. And we would usually almost pretty much every day we would just do like dry runs on the board, testing out all of our missions. Yeah. And if we got something that like kept messing up or something, we would either place it in a different spot at the start or we would um, code it differently if it was really bad. Or if it was like really messed up. And then um, to see if that mission is okay, we would do it three times in a row. Yeah, if, if, and if it. we got it wrong, we had, we had to redo it three times in a row just it to was make sure it was solid. <laughs> uh, kind of have to break them to fit the new box. <laughs> that one's a little too long for the box, so we take off some of it just to make sure it fits all the way. Because that's where we store our robot and all of these attachments. This one is done. Is your attachment that has the bend in it, were there any um, versions that you tried prior to that that led you to this one that's in the back? Um, yes, actually. So we had a different one oh, yeah, I that <laughs> It was originally just a motor that would go up and down, and we were going to we were going to use that for the bendy one. But then, when we went forward a little too much, we realized that it was bendy, and it just pushed it into the right spot. So we used that for the our first competition, and it worked fine. But we wanted it to be a little like more lightweight, so we built this to make it like easier to attach and easier yeah. to like, go faster and everything. Because we would have to like have to work with like 
But is it one of these white cord screw that have to one of the motors this and one of the thinner area? And our old attachment when it's not enough to push it down. So yeah. That was like it's kind of breaking a little bit. Yeah. Alright. I think we broke it actually. Um, when you were testing it um, those three times in a row to make sure everything was working, did you have a way that you um, documented your testing throughout? Um, no, not really. We would kind of just like replace it in a different spot if it wasn't working right every time, and we would just remember how it got wrong. Just kind of. What were the ways that you guys communicated those ways that you were testing it with each other? Uh, <laughs> we would. Uh, we would just like place it in the same spot every time and do like one mission at a time. And we would like we would do his board at the start. Yeah. Like, I would and if he got all like his missions right, then he would go to my side and I would have to do it three times in a row too. Or to try to not get all the missions three times in a row, but like do a dry run and then it. see what went wrong. And then, um, yeah. Yeah. How did your robot get better throughout the season? Well, well, we kind of we just made new attachments to make it better. Got like new this instead. Got, got new parts and new lights. Yeah, and um, we put the attachments in different spots at some points. Like we had it really close to the um, side thing, and that wasn't working out. So we changed. We moved it just a little bit to make it so it would be easier to move it. Oh yeah. Walk me through um, kind of how once the grid comes into place. Um, um okay. So um, hmm. pretty much most of it is at the start we just use like go forward and go backwards and turn things, turn motion, I guess. And most of that that's just mainly what we do. Since we only have since we only have um push attachments and we only like use push missions. We get a decent amount of points with that even. But most of our code because of that is just going forward and turning mainly yeah. and going back. But if we make it through that we gotta add this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> On average with a robot run, how many points would you say is a decent amount of points? A decent amount? Just typically for you guys, what's your uh, Yeah, about three hundred, three ten. Um, when it came to um, coding um, and making sure everybody was understanding how it worked, you talked a little bit about during the project how you kind of split up into teams. Was there a way that you made sure that every team member understood the aspects of what was going on? Um, I think I said this before, but we tried to, at the beginning of the year, we tried to like, get all the people to do a little bit of coding, just to like, get the hang of it and see how it worked a little bit. And then, if they want, they chose what team they wanted, basically. I think we can move on to four ballots. Yeah. Well, uh, team, I was wondering, as you, you talked about your sort of uh, your setup with the, the sock puppet presentation, kind of like setting the tone, and then you've got your your app idea and <clears throat> and your robot uh, uh, coding. What's uh, the what was the toughest challenge that you guys kind of faced putting all this together, and how did you overcome it as a team? When what's her name? Angela. Yeah. Yeah. One of our team members left. Uh, like, I think it was like a month ago. She does not want to choir. And she had to do uh, honor choir. Yeah. It's one of her things, and so we had to like switch around a bunch of stuff. Like yeah. fix a lot of stuff. She was a person who did a lot. Yeah, so she, yeah, did she actually made stuff. our sock puppets, and she helped write the original script. Mm -hmm. And our original script is quite a bit different from our script we have now, but we have done a lot of changes to that. But she did leave. She made. She actually made the app design. So like not the app itself, but the app logo. Yeah. So that's all Andalyn. So she did quite a lot before she left. 
So then how did, how did you guys sort of like rally around and sort of like pick, pick up that work and that charge and that creative challenge? So since we did change our app design a little bit where we like added the big, like the sizing feature and the social media feature, I had to like go in and change the script with that. Like Michael actually did change the script and then I just went in to make it shorter so that we had more time to talk about our actual app. And, yeah, and we added things to the innovation project. And I didn't talk about the kind of social media thing all that well, honestly. <laughs> yeah. In my original script, so it was improved. Great. When there were conflicts or disagreements among your team, how did you guys go about resolving those? Um, we kind of just like talked it through with everybody, and we like made sure they understood everything, if there was anything that like we disagreed on. Like when we first added the social media feature, uh, we all didn't agree on that. So I, well, not me, not just me, but we had to explain why we could have the social media feature with the shopping and the like size adjustments. So we had to explain why we could have all of that in one thing and it wouldn't cause problems. Uh, I think Will was the first person who kind of criticized the idea and then I think I was working with like Brand and Linnea trying to negotiate with them and try to figure out like what would work best. How would you say that your coach has helped you with your work? He's been like, if we got a little distracted, he would say, like you gotta, well if any of us got distracted, yeah. you <laughs> get us back on course. Yeah, that was one thing he did well. Yeah, and um, he, so, like provided suggestions for uh, anything on our robot board if something was like, out of place and we just make it better we could fix it uh, he also like helped organize like before school practices in case we needed to work on something yeah we yeah, needed the extra time yeah he also brought in parents to like watch our presentation so that was something that definitely helped yeah he suggested other things for the innovation project too not just for coding and everything. Okay. Well, I, I've really appreciated uh, the you know, Slack Puppet uh, show at the beginning. It was, it was uh, uh, pretty delightful. And then hearing you guys talk about and kind of like share and, and seeing, seeing the camaraderie around the team, it seems like you guys had a lot of fun uh, doing this. I'm wondering, uh, you know, how do you, how do you guys celebrate as a team? Or how do you like say, hey, we accomplished this? Like, what does that look like? Grant for getting robot last year. Oh yeah. I slightly forgave him. Oh, well, just like, well, I don't know, random high fives, I guess. We also, um, good. we also get a little bit of time to relax. Uh, what was that? We also get a little bit of time to relax. Yeah, okay. time to relax. I think uh, generally, for me, it might just be like going into like the main room with uh, everybody else and uh, just like actually like listening to music and like in, in general, like, the main room's better. And I feel like we're better when we work together um, as a team. Like I'm, I'm definitely more productive when I'm working with. <laughs> other team members. <laughs> We're just about coming to the end of our time here with you guys today. So before you guys leave, is there anything else you would like us as judges to know or to remember about you guys specifically? Uh, the song puppet show. Thank you guys so much yeah, for all thank you. the season and for being here with us today. I'll speak as you.